Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Aki Curtis. Today, I want to share a luxury holiday guide to Melbourne. When you think of luxury holiday destinations, where comes to mind? New York, London, Milan, Paris. Great. Once you've been to all four, where else? Australia. Yes, Australia. Some call it the land of vast wilderness with lots of animals that try to kill you. But don't listen to them. I just came back from Melbourne. Two week holiday. Alive. Well, and put on a little bit of weight. That means I had a great holiday. And so I'm going to give you a little holiday guide on where to stay, where to go, where to go eat, where to pick up your coffee, and of course, where to shop. I'm gonna break this down into five different categories. Number one, a luxury hotel experience. I have three different types of hotel recommendations for you. Number one, if you really want to splurge and spoil yourself, I would recommend Sofitel Melbourne on Collins. Oh, this is a beautiful luxury hotel situated at the heart of Melbourne Central. It is a very, very convenient spot where you can easily reach the best shopping locations, best cafes, best restaurants, and plenty of very fun things to do around the hotel area. So that is definitely a plus plus. If you are to book Sofitel, I would recommend the Luxury Club King Room because with that, you have exclusive access to their club lounge, which is on, I think, 53 floor. It's a private lounge area, very quiet, very private, right? And so you can have an overview of the whole city. I like to go up to the exclusive lounge in the evening, overlook the cityscape with a glass of wine. Where do you get spots like that included in the hotel? And private, quiet. I love my peace of mind. Oh, if you do book a club room with Sofitel Melbourne, do try to wake up one morning for the beautiful sunrise. I know, why are we waking up early on a holiday? Trust me, it is worth it, trust me. And so yeah, check it out. Okay, if that is not for you, and if you prefer something artsy, something bold, something a bit more quirky, I would recommend the Motley Richmond Hotel on the Richmond suburb. It is about 10 minutes Uber ride from the central business district and it is the highest rated hotel on booking.com. Check this out. Okay, if you do book a stay with this hotel, do check out their in-house bar and restaurant because the food, especially the breakfast, is pretty amazing. And if those two hotels are not for you either, that's okay. Option three, the Victorian Melbourne houses. Melbourne is very well known for these beautiful Victorian style houses. And you can book one of them on Airbnb and experience what is it like to live like a Melbourneian. I actually booked one for a couple days to stay in and just to experience what it's like to live in a house, a beautiful house like this because I've been living in apartments throughout my life and it's quite cute, the interior, the exterior, the vibe, the front yard, the little garden patches, very, very, very cute. So yeah, that is definitely the most budget-friendly option out of all three. Number two, fashion shopping in the central business district. Because Melbourne is the fashion capital of Australia, of course you have to buy a thing or two here and bring it back home. It only makes sense. For me, I love grabbing a cup of iced coffee. A cup of iced coffee? What the hell? An iced coffee. And just wandering around Collins Street and Burke Street. 
check out all the beautiful store, the David Jones, an Australian department store, and a lot of beautiful stores are also located in beautiful heritage buildings. So even though if you don't buy anything, it just feels very dreamy just to walk around with your iced coffee, check out all the stores, window shopping, almost feels like Audrey Hepburn in breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh, also, if you come here during the Christmas holiday period, the Christmas decorations are so beautiful. Oh yeah, Christmas holiday period is summer in Australia. I know, it is a bit different, but look at my tan. Buy a holiday, get a tan. Perfect. Fashion brand wise, because Melbourne and Australia as a whole is a very creative, fashionable country, there are a lot of local brands that you should get your hands on and bring some of these home. For example, Zimmerman, a brand that is well known for its beautiful lace work, its craftsmanship and the way their garments move. Oh. Christopher Esper, known for their cool cutouts and creative use of hardware. I love this brand. Also, Beckenbridge, oh, I actually have that top, known for their feminine shape and silhouettes. And then we have Age, a feminine brand that is known for its volume designs and ruffles. Also, Alamaze, here's all the colors and prints you need in your life and many, many more, but we don't have all the time in the world, so let's move on to the next thing to do in Melbourne. Number three, watch a play at Regent Theatre. Regent Theatre is a beautiful historical place that has been around since 1929. And to be very honest, I'm not the kind that will usually go watch a play because I am not Shakespeare or Hamlet kind of fan. I feel like it's just okay, okay, just a, okay. I don't know how to appreciate them, okay? Hi. I'm not artsy, I'm not posh enough. But under some friends' influence, we bought some tickets to go watch Moulin Rouge. And if you're wondering why Moulin Rouge, we all know how it started, how it ended, why bought it, right? I ended up having the most amazing, most fun experience at Regent Theatre. Maybe it was the theatre set up, maybe because of the place, it allows a lot of creative freedom to the set designs, the transitions, the lighting. Even though I knew roughly how it started, how it ended, without giving away too much, I still had a really amazing time. Oh, if you are planning to go to Regent Theatre, remember to dress up because you'll want to take pictures. Trust me. Yes, Number four, fancy dining in Melbourne. Melbourne is a very diverse city with melting pot of cultures. That means there are plenty of different cuisines, a lot of restaurants, and the Melbourne coffee culture. Oh. But one particular restaurant really stood up to me. Oh my God. If you're in Melbourne, you need to book this French restaurant one week in advance. It is called Rain et la Rue. It is a beautiful French restaurant hidden inside a very old bank building. I know! This is an experience. Oh, you want to dress up for this one too because this is a beautiful place. For romantic dates or celebrations, the customer service is pretty amazing too. A guaranteed wonderful experience. Mm -mm. Another beautiful place you need to go. That's it, you need to go. And last but not least, if you're in Melbourne, you need to experience their coffee culture. And I have one very particular place that you need to go. It is called the Brunetti Oro on Flinders Lane. This is located in the central of Melbourne as well. Brunetti Oro is a famous Italian pasticceria owned by pastry chef Giorgio Angeli and his family. 
The store features cake few fridges lining the entryway. I have to say, it is very impressive as you walked in. A 300 seat restaurant serving fresh traditional Italian breakfast, lunch and dinner. Besides a huge variety of cakes and biscotti, this place also has a very impressive coffee bar brewing on exclusive Brunetti and Lavazza blend. A Campari bar, a gelateria, a sandwich and pizza bar, also a wine corner. It is a place that you can easily get lost. This place is always pumping, always busy, even from very early in the morning. I have been there three different times. The variety is so vast, I haven't even get to try out every single thing. It is very popular, very popular, very well loved by locals and tourists, and I can't recommend enough. So yeah, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, press that bell button so that you don't miss out on any videos. If you are on social media, this is my Instagram, this is my TikTok. Have a lovely day and I hope I get to see you on my next video. Ciao.